welcome to Dusk's Declassified Cosplay Survival Guide. I decided I wanted to do a series like this because I've learned a lot in the last seven years since I started cosplaying, and a lot of what I've learned is what not to do as opposed to what to do. Thankfully, there's a lot of different cosplayers out there who have figured things out already and have been able to share their progress and process so that other cosplayers don't have to make the same mistakes they did while they were learning. So I really wanted to do the same thing. So today, what I'm here to talk to you about is wigs. And more specifically, wig upkeep and storage and all of that good stuff. So let's get started. So wig care. Usually when you get a wig in the mail, it's gonna come in some kind of bag or maybe just some kind of a netting. If it doesn't already come in some kind of Ziploc-ish type bag, I put it in one because it'll be safer in here, it'll last longer, and I didn't do it on this one, but most of my wigs also have a label on them with masking tape or Sharpie to say what wig it is. I have a whole drawer full of these. And when I say these, I am specifically talking about all the wigs that don't necessarily have to be on a wig head. And when I think of things on wig heads, I think of something with some extreme styling, like my Marinette slash Ladybug wig. There's no way this is ever going to go into a bag again. It's permanently stuck the way that it is. And that's great, but if it ever comes off this wig head, it obviously isn't on my head, there's a lot of possibility for damage and the styling coming undone. So wigs you really want to keep on a wig head would be anything with extreme styling to it or anything with spikes. Anytime you put a wig with spikes into a bag of any kind or just throw it on the ground, leave it somewhere, the spikes are gonna start falling out, getting damaged, coming apart. It's just generally not good to do that to a wig with spikes. So if nothing else, get wig heads for those, and then everything else can go in a bag. So the wigs that you decide to keep in a bag or storage of some kind, you want these to be the wigs that essentially all you have to do is brush them out, style the bangs, and then like that's it. So theoretically it should only take you five minutes when you're putting your cosplay on in order to do some tiny little styling, brush it to the side, use hairspray, and then you're good to go for the day. If it takes you any more than say 15 minutes to get your wig ready to go on your head, you should definitely consider getting a wig head for it instead. Now, there are lots of ways to try to transport your wig heads from location to location, whether it's a photo shoot or you're going to a convention. I've seen people who have made a custom wig box uh, vicious cosplay. She does have a tutorial for how she makes her custom wig carrying cases in order for you to safely transport them from location A to location B. I've seen other cosplayers who have gotten one of those carrying cases for a sewing machine, which are usually about yay wide, and they can fit a couple wigs inside of them if they don't have any kind of serious styling to them. Obviously, my Marinette ladybug wig would not fit because it's too wide. In which case you'd want to look into something like what Vicious Cosplay has done. Sometimes you can find a box in a shape that your wig just fits perfectly in. And if that's the case, that's great. Use that. Essentially, you don't want your wig to get dirty or to become unstyled during transportation. Um, it's one of the suckiest things pulling up to the parking lot of your hotel, carrying the wig to your room, and noticing that all your hard work has fallen out. Another way you're really gonna wanna care for your wigs is to make sure you brush them. So I use this brush right here. It's a Conair, um, it's a wet brush. So for people with really thick hair, you would use it in the shower when your hair is wet and it combs it through. It is better to use a very wide tooth comb or pick to brush through your wigs. It helps keep them from getting really staticky. If a wig I'm working on ever starts getting real frizzy while I'm trying to brush it out, all you gotta do really is get it a little wet. Static and frizz is something you really wanna try to avoid. 
um, over brushing it can do it and that's why you want to use a wide tooth brush or comb in order to try to avoid that problem. So the last thing I want to talk to you about <laughs> is what do you do if your wig gets tangled? And this only really applies to longer wigs, whether it's a ponytail kind of clip like you see in Miku wigs or if it's just a flat out butt length wig or longer, but hopefully not too much longer. What do you do if it's tangled and it looks like a rat's nest in the bottom and no matter what you seem to do, you can't fix it? I'm gonna tell you a little story. I went to Colossal Con a couple years ago and I had an Akita Nehru wig. Akita Nehru is essentially a Vocaloid with one giant ponytail on the one side, it's blonde, and it was so soft, and it was my favorite wig, and I made the mistake of going to a rave in it. I didn't braid it, I didn't do anything, and I love raves, and I just jump around, and it was so much fun, and I go back to our hotel room, and it's a nightmare. Like, the whole thing, from the bottom to like, the very top is just one giant tangle and I can't make any progress. I didn't know what kind of comb I should or shouldn't be using, so I'm just using normal brushes and it's getting worse and it's just one big ball of staticky fuzz at the bottom. And so I think, oh, well, maybe I just gotta wash it with conditioner and it'll get better. Mistake number two, I put it in the bathtub at the hotel and just laid it and all this water that I filled the tub with, put some shampoo and conditioner in it, and then just kind of whooshed it around like this. That didn't do anything besides make it worse. What was I thinking? I wasn't brushing it. It's not normal hair. You put conditioner in normal hair, your hair naturally, naturally just starts getting nice and smooth, and you can run your hands through it. You do that to a wig, wig doesn't care. Wig is plastic, or synthetic, or whatever you want to call it. So I just made everything worse and I thought that if I just clipped it to a hanger and let it drip dry overnight that in the morning I'd be able to comb through it and all my problems would be solved. Needless to say, that was not the case and I had to kind of attempt to just brush the outside of the ponytail to make it look smooth because we had to go to the masquerade and perform a skit with this wig that now looks like a rat's nest and it was awful. Thankfully. After I've made these horrendous mistakes, I also found a great way of detangling it when that happens. When you have a wig you're trying to detangle and it's longer, granted you don't really have to worry about this with shorter wigs, is you are going to want to get a towel and lay it on the bathroom counter or the kitchen counter, but you're going to want to be next to a sink and you'll understand why in a second. You're going to lay the clip out or the entire wig out and just kind of spread the hair along the towel and you're gonna start at the very very bottom and just kind of go like this to the very end until it goes completely through without a problem and anytime it starts to get frizzy or staticky you're just gonna spray it or soak it flick water on it I don't care but anytime it starts to get staticky you need to get it wet again and then you're going to just flip it to the reverse side and do that for an inch or two down. You essentially have to work up one to two inches at a time and as soon as it's tangle free on one side you gotta flip it over and do the other side the entire time getting it wet and you know what it sounds ridiculous and it'll probably take two to three hours depending on how bad the damage is but it came out of my wig and it was just as smooth as it had been before. And if I hadn't converted it into something else, I would totally show you how amazing it was. That's the method that I use to detangle my long wigs. There are other ways to detangle wigs as well, and I'm sure you'll be able to find them with a simple search. A lot of cosplayers have found creative and effective means to do so. That one is just the easiest for me. It's a little time consuming, that's fine. Thank you for checking out my Dusk Declassified Cosplay Survival Guide. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions, anything you think I could or should elaborate on. I'd love to hear your opinions and thoughts. 
feel free to click and subscribe if you like what you see. My name's Dusk, I'm a dreamer, and I don't need to wear a wig to talk about wigs. But I really kind of feel naked without one, so there is that. Whew, that was a lot.